Welcome to the video tutorial series on tribology. This series is a part of the course on tribology taught by Professor Fred Higgs at Carnegie Mellon University. My name is Prathamesh. Akash and I have prepared this tutorial on hydrostatic lubrication. In particular, this tutorial will teach you to design power efficient thrust bearings for large telescopes. What do we mean by large telescopes? The largeness or power of a telescope is measured in terms of its light gathering capacity. Larger the aperture, larger the light gathering capacity and larger the telescope. The 8 inch mead reflector on the left, which can be found in the backyard of an astronomy enthusiast, is referred to as a small telescope. Whereas the 100 inch hail telescope from Caltech on the right is referred to as a large telescope. We will try to design bearings for the hail telescope in this tutorial. The next question which comes is, why do we need hydrostatic thrust bearings in a telescope? This is answered when we understand the working of a telescope. To keep the sighted celestial object in focus over long times requires the telescope to be smoothly rotated at angular speeds equal to that of Earth but opposite in direction. This speed is very low, of the order of 10 raised to minus 5 radian per second. Thus a large telescope involves movement of large loads of mirrors or lenses at low speeds. Therefore, thrust bearings are required. The tube of a large telescope sits on a mount via bearings. If roller thrust bearings are used, then the resulting stick-slip condition, an obvious phenomenon at low speeds, hampers the smooth operation of a large telescope and voids out its usefulness. This also results in loss of millions of dollars spent in building the large lenses or mirrors. Hence, we need hydrostatic thrust bearings in a large telescope. Let's have a closer look at the Hale telescope which pioneered the use of hydrostatic thrust bearings for telescopes in 1940s. This is the structure which hosts the telescope. Let's zoom inside the structure to see the actual telescope. Now let's check out the model form of the scope. If we were to draw a schematic of the Hale telescope then it would look something like this. We can now see the actual positions of the hydrostatic thrust bearings denoted by oil pads in the schematic. This 100 inch hell reflector scope makes use of square hydrostatic bearings as shown in the schematic on the left. The upper left diagram shows the front view of the bearing and the lower one shows the top view. Axes are oriented as shown in these diagrams. Q stands for the flow rate. The table on the right shows the real parameters for these square bearings. W stands for the load on the bearing. Uppercase B denotes the size of the square bearing. Lowercase b is the sill length of the bearing and h is the assumed film thickness. The lubricant which is used in these bearings is SAE 20 oil. The data is obtained from the work of Barlow. This brings us to our problem statement. We need to find the recess dimension of a hydrostatic square bearing which will consume least power for a given load, film thickness, bearing size and lubricant. Now let's try to solve the problem. Since the problem at hand is related to the theory of lubrication, we can directly start from the 2D Reynolds equation instead of the Navier-Stokes equations. This is the general expression for the 2D Reynolds equation in Cartesian coordinates for an inertialess, Newtonian and incompressible fluid. In this equation, these terms represent the pressure effects. These terms represent the wedge effect and this term represents the squeeze effect. This equation is applicable only for the sill region. The pressure in the recess can be assumed to be constant as the predominant pressure gradient occurs in the sill region. Let's try to simplify this equation by taking into account the actual problem at hand. Squeeze effects can be neglected as we can assume the problem to be quasi-steady. The wedge terms are zero as the film thickness doesn't change along the sill length. Thus, the 2D Reynolds equation simplifies to the following equation. That is, the pressure inside a square hydrostatic bearing obeys Laplace's equation. This governing equation is subjected to the boundary condition of prescribed ambient pressure along the outer boundaries and recess pressure for the recess region. Since the governing equation is a partial differential equation, we cannot get an exact analytical solution. 
So let's use finite difference method to obtain a numerical solution. A sample rectilinear grid is shown on the lower right. Let's discretize pressure at the nodes in the grid. A typical IJ node is shown with its north and east neighbors. I and J indices are oriented along X and Y directions respectively. Therefore, the east neighbor of PIJ is PI plus 1J and the north neighbor is PIJ plus 1. Also shown are the step sizes along X and Y direction, which are DX and DY respectively. Now let's discretize the governing Laplace's equation. Let's use second order accurate central difference schemes for the two pressure derivatives. Thus, dou square P by dou X square becomes PI plus 1J minus twice PIJ plus PI minus 1J divided by delta X square. And correspondingly, dou square P by dou Y square becomes PIJ plus 1 minus twice PIJ plus PIJ minus 1 divided by delta Y square. Since the domain is square, we can use equal grid points along X and Y directions. Thus, DX is equal to DY. So the discretized equation further simplifies to become this equation. The aim of our problem is to minimize the power consumption. The power required to operate this hydrostatic thrust bearing is given by the product of recess pressure and leakage or flow rate. The flow rate can be calculated by this formula. We can calculate the leakage from right side of the bearing by integrating this equation along the y-axis. Then the total flow is 4 times this integral as there will be equal flow exiting all the 4 sides due to the symmetry of the problem. To discretize this equation, we first need to discretize the pressure derivative, that's dou p by dou x. We will use second order accurate central difference scheme to calculate the pressure gradient at the right edge as pnj minus pn minus 2j divided by twice delta x. Second, we need to replace the integral along y axis by a summation over all j points on the right edge. So the discretized version of the integral equation becomes this equation. In other words, this equation is the discretized version of the integral equation and this equation is the discretized version of our governing differential equation. Remember, the goal is to find the recess geometry which consumes least power. One way to do this is to find power requirements of varying recess geometries and then finding the recess geometry with minimum power requirement. This is an average flowchart which we can follow to solve the problem at hand. Start with a known bearing geometry that is size, load and lubricant properties. Then start with R which is equal to twice V by capital B equal to 0.1 and iterate through increasing R to obtain power for different research geometries. If the end criteria for R is not met then iterate through this loop. The first step is to find the recess pressure which will result in the pressure profile over the entire bearing capable of supporting the external load. This in itself is a separate problem and viewer can solve it using very many iterative algorithms available. A first order algorithm is shown on the next screen and for the brevity of the tutorial will not be dealt with in detail. The viewer is strongly recommended to pause the video and self learn the process. The second step is to calculate and store flow rate and power. Then iterate through the remaining recess geometries. Once all the recess geometries have been exhausted, stop. This shows the detailed flowchart for the problem at hand. This box has been unpacked into this loop. And if you notice carefully, the remaining steps are carried over from the last screen. These steps have been carried over from the last screen. To ensure that the results obtained from the flowchart are reliable, we need to perform what is known as a mesh independent study. This means that the solutions should be independent of the mesh resolution. To achieve this, we have successfully increased the mesh resolution and plotted it on x-axis. And the error in the power value for a particular mesh with respect to a level up coarser mesh as compared to the power of the most refined mesh is expressed as a percent value on the y-axis. The results are as shown on this plot. Now as we can see, the error goes down with increasing mesh density. 
This image corresponds to a 40 by 40 grid and this image corresponds to a 120 by 120 grid. The error for the 120 by 120 mesh or grid is less than 0.5% and is within acceptable numerical tolerance. All the remaining simulations are carried out using a mesh density of 120 by 120. This screen shows the results obtained using the formulation described till this point in this tutorial. On the left, we can see the changing pressure profile which matches the external load as the recess geometry changes. We can see that the recess pressure increases non-linearly with decreasing recess geometry. Recess geometry is shown in black and white and pressure profile is shown in color. On the right are shown normalized pressure, normalized flow rate and normalized power values versus 2B by B. The values are normalized with the maximum value for the corresponding quantity. The recess pressure increases and the flow rate decreases with decreasing recess geometry. But power, which is a product of these quantities, achieves a minimum value or a sweet spot. Thus the minimum power is achieved at 2B by B of 0.5. This most efficient recess geometry for a given bearing size is shown on the left along with the pressure field. So in summary, hydrostatic bearings are preferred in problems involving high loads and low speeds. For example, the 100 inch hail reflector over roller bearings for smooth operations and reduced friction. Power required for the bearing assembly is a product of recess pressure and leakage flow rate which are in turn dependent on bearing geometry. And finally, analysis similar to the one described in this tutorial can be carried out by the viewer to design power efficient hydrostatic bearings for relevant applications. And here are the references.